Okay, I think we're live. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you, Chloe? Hi, I'm doing really well. Thanks for joining me this morning. Um, yes. It's raining a lot here in Austin, and I know you're in Phoenix. How is Phoenix? I was surprised with the weather. It's actually warm. <laughs> really? Yes, yes. My partners are from Austin and Dallas, and they're having you know a blast here. And they don't want to go back to the crazy weather right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I know um, in Austin, it's like, I think it might be snowing again this Thursday, which is crazy considering it's February. Um, yeah. You know, and also um, I heard a great news from you the other day um, about your move. You want to tell the woman? Uh, of yes, it's Austin. official. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am moving from Los Angeles, California to Austin, Texas. I am planning to visit California often because we still have a couple of development there, a couple, probably like around five or six developments for three and four units and a few custom homes. But yes, definitely. I'm moving to Austin, baby. <laughs> oh my God. Welcome to Texas. It's wild out here. But I think <laughs> I love it. I think I can just see you, your personality. And, you know, you already have a group of women, the community here in Austin um, that are in real estate. So we can't wait to have you. And oh, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I mean, I was so happy to meet you when we got together there for the Ren Inspires Women Real Estate Network there and meet all the girls, amazing women there with kick ass, you yeah. know? <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. And you shared so many great tips, especially personally, I learned a lot about sort of how to deal with contractors as a woman, what to do, what kind of stance should you have? How, how do you, you know, lead a team, all that. So um, I'm excited to dive in uh, about all of that today. Um, so before we go in, for those of the people that are tuning in, but you know, may, may not be familiar with you, can you give yourself a, like a brief short inter introduction? Yes, definitely. No problem. I mean, I, I come from a corporate background. I used to be an engineer for Nestle and before that Johnson and Johnson. And on 2012, I, I read this book, the reach that poor dad book, the purple Bible is how sometimes we joke about it. And I knew that I wanted something more in life than just working corporate America. So I decided to embrace a journey in, in real estate investing. And I remember getting my first deal in 2012. And then I got into the second, the third one. And I remember that that third one, I, I just knew it. And I wrote my resignation letter and then decide to, you know, jump in on real estate investing full time. So at this moment, I... You know, the journey has been ups and downs. <laughs> it wasn't easy to do that jump, especially living in California and not having any kind of experience with real estate. Because it's not like I was raised with family that understood that I'm, you know, I my parents were hardworking people, like police officer, nurse. I just knew that. And I knew how to get a paycheck, but I didn't even knew how to invest and how to really make the money work for me. So as I go through this journey, I got to meet amazing women that really inspire me to dive in. And yes, I start with wholesaling. Then I move from wholesaling to non-performing notes to buying uh, my, my duplex in Burbank, California, to then I start going, you know, growing through that process to jump into the development of three and four units. I did flipping and then I figure out I didn't like that. <laughs> and I, I respect everyone that, that does that. And I will prefer to bring money to the table instead of <laughs> instead of uh, doing the flipping. It's just an entire adventure, right? Mm -hmm. But that has been my journey in the real estate world. Um, it's been, I start from not knowing what escrow was to now I own extend the same hotels with my partners. I have the multifamily tax liens, tax deeds, and different uh, real estate strategies that are available for, you know, anyone. So there's a strategy for everybody. Doesn't matter where you are today in life, financially, or, you know, 
and, and life itself, right? There's going to be a way that you can get into real estate investing somehow. Yeah. And that's so inspirational, you know, considering that, you know, um, you weren't born with lots of money, right? Um, you, you, know, you sort of figured out, uh, I'm sorry, I have two, I'm, I'm puppy sitting. So you might have so cute. little puppies that are running around. I'll show you guys if, uh, if they ever come back to me, but, um, sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, I think that's so cool. The inspirational, you know, sort of, sort of the stories of how you got from, you know, maybe corporate environment that, you know, a lot of women might be um, relating to right now. Um, and they're thinking, oh, there isn't another way out of here. You know, I'll have to work until I'm 61 or something um, versus you made choices um, along the way, hard choices that um, basically, you know, enabled you to be where you are. Right. Um, so can you talk a little bit about sort of your thought process or your perspective on like, you know, going from, you know, wholesaling to flipping um, that I think that kind of makes sense. But jumping that from that to say, um, you know, non-performing notes or tax lien, how do you jump to that? Like, do you have a mentor who's like, oh, you know, this is what I do. I'll show you around or, or how did you get to that level? Yes, definitely. I mean, I'm going to go even a little bit back to because I, one of the most important thing is like, you can get mentors, you can get coaches, you can get education, but the process to get there is start with him. It start with you believing in you and, you know, you creating um, a, a process to develop yourself emotionally to prepare to growth. So growth doesn't come just with techniques, tools, and strategies, and mentor. Growth is start within. So I did went through a lot of development, self-development. I mean, from Tony Robbins classes to Brandon Bouchard classes to uh, very unique uh, programs like the dark side of the light chasers from Debbie Ford. All of that make you realize who you are as a human being and who you want to become. So I will say, if you ask me, that was the start point, working on myself to really find out who I was as a human being so I can determine how I'm going to move forward. So once I was very clear about what I really wanted in life and who I wanted to become, then I start, I was studying in the meantime, I was reading books, I become a real estate geek, I, I was learning you know, in every way I was attending to every real estate network event, I cool. So I will say that that was a key for me to meet with people, to connect with people that were as crazy as me, right? In the real estate that they really want to learn. And yes, I hire a professional mentor at some point to that process. But honestly, it's not been only the mentor is the network that has allowed me to grow that fast, you know, to have the ability to connect with someone in the other side of the United States of America and other women, for example, and ask them, hey, how do I deal with contractors or have you have to deal with this situation where you have a contractor who doesn't want to work with a woman or do not respect me because I'm a woman and he doesn't believe that I can do the job, right? So... It was networking, connecting with the right women, uh, surrounding myself with the women. And sometimes I said, I said, you know, sometimes you have to borrow someone else's confidence in order to do this. I will say that it started there with finding the right resources to help me move forward. Once I did that, it was a matter of me jumping in. And as you mentioned, yes, I started with wholesaling because when I quit my corporate job, I didn't have money. Right? I just have a little bit of money to survive for a year. I only have one year to make it work no matter what, without excuses. Because for me, it's like, if I don't make it work, I have to go back to my corporate job and that could be fine, right? There was nothing wrong with that starting over. But I didn't even know at that time if I have the strength that if I have to go through that process, I was able to quit again. So I'm like, this is my year and no matter what, no excuses, I'm not going to justify my any kind of failure or, or things like that. I'm just going to go for it. So I dedicate that year to learn to go and jump and do it. And I it's starting wholesaling. Now, it's not into um, when I start going to flipping, 
that I understood that one of the biggest challenges for the number one challenge or the most common one for most real estate investors is access to capital, which it was my issue too. What I didn't knew is that, you know, every, every investors always have that challenge. How do you get access to more capital so you can tap into all of these deals? So suddenly what I didn't realize is that I have these resources that I develop. Um, and when I talk about resources, I'm talking about relationships, people that trust me, people that they knew that I was trustworthy, that I will do my best in anything that I was doing. So it wasn't about the money. It was a relationship that I was really good building that. And through that process, I find out that as I was going through real estate, people wanted to learn more about it. And they didn't want to leave their corporate job, but they wanted to grow their money, right? And they didn't have the time to do what I was doing. I did have the time. So we were exchanging resources. They have the money, I have the time. And I was getting all the experience from the people I met through my network. So, and I was doing projects with them. As that's evolving, Chloe, I learned these amazing skills. One of the critical skills not only for real estate investors, but any entrepreneurs is the ability to get access to capital. Once that you know that, there's no stopping you, right? Because you can get from, yes, maybe wholesaling, then I start going and flipping with a little bit of, of money and some people have X amount of money and they want it to be part of the deal. And then guess what? You do right. You, met, you treat your investors right, you nurture that relationship, you educate them, you make them money, they're going to ask for the next deal and the next deal. And the boys or, or the referrals start going around. They start bringing their friends, right? So that's what happened with me. So once I, I learned that skill of raising capital, working with private lenders, dealing with the Security Exchange Commission um, in order to form syndications, I start scaling up. And of course, it's not that I was good in every strategy in real estate. I just partner up. I bet my partners. I did a little bit of money and I invested with those partners, find out how they were doing, learn from them. And then I went ahead and I started raising capital to get into more and more deals. So it took me around three to four years to really accelerate in, in you know, in this journey to go from one unit to two, to three, to four, to 50, to 139 units, right? And I'm actually sitting at that hotel right now because <laughs> I was here visiting um, to check how the progress is going. So it's a journey. It's not a, um, it's not a competition of who is quicker. Um, it's a matter of make it to the you know, to the end line and make sure that you start preparing yourself for the next race and the next race. So raising capital was that skill that helped me out. Networking, getting educated were the three biggest elements that helped me grow through the process. Oh my God, that was so great. Um, I think we need to unpack a lot of what you're saying. Um, okay, let's go into uh, raising capital first because that's mm -hmm. that... Um, I wasn't even sure how to even get in. And I think a lot of, you know, women who's not in that space might have the same um, question, you know, um, and I, I know you, you, you have some like materials and courses on this. So if, if there's any other women um, who are interested in getting to know more in detail, reach out to her, um, we'll share her email um, afterwards. But um, so for women who are just starting um, and they, they don't really have a lot of track record in terms of development or doing the deal how does one go about getting access to the pool of private lenders um, who are out there who are lending and, and all that stuff um, how, how how do you get into the space you know how do you put in sort of stuff? yeah well let me let me I'm gonna step a little bit back because there's three different things um, there's the women who doesn't have the experience right um, the first question for every woman who wants to get into the space of that is what are you bringing to the table, right? And you might not have experience, you might not have a lot of things. And I think that we spend too much time on that, on what we don't have. 
But for those women who, for example, say, you know what, I don't have that, but I'm a very organized woman and I know that I can set up systems or I know that I have the time to go and do this. The first thing is how can you collaborate with someone else, right? Um, maybe finding properties to gather the experience. When we're talking about money, people is investing in you, right? They're investing on who you are as a human being and what they have observed in you. If you're a flaky person, they're not going to invest in you because they know that it's going to be flaky, right? They want to see that character. The, the vehicle to make the money is the real estate, right? But they're investing in you. People forget about that. They invest because they know that you have your certain kind of person. So you want to get in that space? You have to check yourself first. You know, it's a self-check who I want to become in order to attract the money, right? A lot of people go out there and they try to chase the money. My intention was never to chase the money. My intention was to become a money magnet. Who I wanted to become to attract the people I wanted to work, the ones that trust me, the one that, you know, have all of these qualities I want to work with them. And that's why I'm stepping back for a second, right? They want to get in that space, check yourself first. The second thing that happened is if you want to go out there, right? Um, you want to raise capital. You're people that need, you're someone that needs to get out there. And, and people want to see you as a human being. Who are you? You want to, they want to make sure that you have what they call a thoughtful leadership platform. They can see you in front of the room doing something. Um, the second thing is they want to see you in social media. People, I mean, social media have shifted the entire world and they want to see who you are. Yes, which deals are you doing, but who you are. So that's how they start, you know, you start attracting people and and raising capital, it's, it's a little bit old fashioned. When you're going to raise capital, yes, you educate them, you share information, but at the end, you need to do this. You need to be in the phone or you need to meet with them personally. So that's part of the steps. I mean, th that you have to that before you even go out there getting all crazy on working on private lenders. So to answer the question is how they get started, checking yourself, start building that relationship. Can you go out there and meet investors pretty quickly? Yes. But remember, you're building a relationship and that's what is really important. So the question is, where do you find these investors, right? Where do you go? Where do you start? Um, personally, yesterday, I, wa I, mean, I was in the Scottsdale, Arizona area in a restaurant, Eddie V's, and I just happened to meet this amazing lady. We didn't talk about um, money or anything like that. We were just in these nice restaurants because I, really I really wanted to have fun. And she just happened to be a, a Arabic horse breeder from Dallas. And I just wanted to know about her. I was so intrigued. And as we are having the conversations, she comes back to me and says, Jen, what do you do? And I told her what I do. And she's like, wow, I'm a private equity investor. Can we chat about this more? I would love to see what else you do. Just because I didn't have an agenda on my pocket, right? I'm very interested about people. And I go to places to where I want to connect with those people that I know that I like things, right? For example, I like to think out of the box. My, my mother came from a nurse. She was a nurse. And in the medical industry, there's, you know, doctors and things like that. So I'm very interested in learning more about how the doctors live life and what do they do? Because that's a very dedicated um career, right? You have to love it or you have to love it. There's no other choice. So I go and I hang out where there's doctor's conference, right? Why? They're busy. They have money. They don't have the time to learn real estate. They need someone like me to help them out, right? To help them out um, investing real estate according to what is that they need. So I tend to go in very different routes. I tend to spend time in places and meet people and just know about them. I do hang out in a real estate networks event too, where, you know, where investors can make decisions quicker because they have a lot of experience or they have some experience kind of thing. 
Um, I do go and do speaking engagements. I do have social media platform where I have an online presence. So there's multiple things that you can do to meet the investors. Uh, and then you can make the decision. Are you looking for that one investor that have the million dollars or are you looking for a specific kind of investors? I personally have both of them. It's just what they're looking for, for their taxes, for their returns, for the kind of properties that they invest are very different, right? So the people need to decide, or the women needs to decide, do I want to work with one or multiple investors? And what kind of asset are you going to be focusing on too? Because if you want to be all over the place and start all over the place, you're not going to be effective. So you want to start? Start finding the things that you really love and ask yourself, is people with money hang out where I hang out? And can we connect through this hobby or a special thing I do? And the third one is put your agenda in your pocket, right? Remember that you're working with people and you want to care for them. You want to understand what is that they need. And I'm not talking that you have to be like a year talking to them in the phone. It takes 15 minutes to know what people need in a real conversation, in a, in a moment that you really ask about them. In 15 minutes, I know what is that they need, what is that they like, and we haven't talked about money, right? So it's going through that process, Chloe. That's where raising capital starts. It starts with you, within you. It starts with you having the right venues to attract the money to you and then everything else, then that's the technical part. But I will say that if you do the 80%, which is the relationship portion, the 20% is like this. You can close them like this, right? But that 80% is what it matters because you're going to find a lot about them. And if you really want to work with them, because honestly, I don't work with every investor. I have investors that I don't care how much millions of dollars they have. There's no way I'm making business with them because who they are as people. I get to fire investors. I'm like, no, I, I get to choose who is who I'm giving the opportunity to raise. I mean, to to make the money. Because it's 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 a it's a exchange, right, of resources and opportunities. So you want to start that that's that's where I you know I will start start building relationship and talking to people and caring for people so and get focused. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, and I feel like it's a lot of uh, mindset shift. You know, instead yeah. of you trying to chase money, like you said, um, it's all about sort of having the confidence and your ability to. Um, yeah need a good deal um, that will um, give back the the promised returns, all the all the promises that you've made to your investors and then really take care of them. And you're you're a um, sort of the person they invest in you as a person. They don't invest in the deal per se, as I think what I've heard over and over again um, from you and other investors as well. Um, so that's that's awesome. I feel like, you know, that get that clarity and focus. I think that's, that's going to help a lot of women. Um, yeah. And, and I think uh, a lot of uh, that kind of confidence and, you know, whenever you're talking to investors, it, it must come from, you know, your baseline knowledge of all the things that you've done, right? For example, you, you know, um, all the flips you've done, um, all the, you know, uh, in, you know, developments, new developments you've done. Um, and I, so I, so I want to go into that a little bit in detail because you have started from there, right? Um, after flipping. Um, and also I'm doing a new development myself. <laughs> for the first time, so selfish enough, I'm going to ask questions about it. So I learned yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> So, so uh, when you first started new new development um, in California, right? Mm -hmm. um, you must have learned a lot of lessons. Um, can you share some of big item lessons that you've learned when you first gotten into new build, new development? Yes, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna share from a high level overview because it's so different in every state, right? So first of all, as you mentioned, um, and let me tell you this: when I started. Again, I didn't knew much about this. So I found a partner and actually she happens to be a female developer and we just connected in the human level, I call it, right? In the in the a relationship level. And when I got into a development project, I thought that it was going to be very difficult, right? Because I'm like, I have never done that. I don't even know how they do this, right? 
All right? How do, where do you start? The first thing that definitely you need to have, it's a experienced uh, group of people that help you develop. I'm talking about engineers. I'm talking about architects. I'm talking about a experienced project manager, especially when you are starting, because you're not going to know a lot of things, right? Um, and normally you want to keep it in a high level of review, but just having that a specific team that will help you develop will be critical. So get the right engineer, get the right architects. You can get those contacts from the people that you network in the real estate events. Right. And you want to at least contact three or four resources and see their experience. So and you want to make sure that there's, there's some factors I always look into it when I'm working with a team. Yes, their experience is critical, but also their way of communicating. Are we in constant, you know, communication? Do they communicate on a fashion manner, right? Timely fashion manner, because there's a lot of people that are very talented, but they don't care. And it's like, whatever, I'm going to do it whenever, right? And you don't want to have that. You want to have a relationship with your team. So only then you can things, move things forward, right? I have seen architects that they are amazing, but they don't get back to you and three weeks after you send them an email fire. I don't care how talented you are. If you don't have that and, and don't have the courtesy to get back to me in a timely fashion manner, then I'm out. Right. Because if you think about it, it's three, three weeks of your money being burned by this person. So this person doesn't care about putting money in your pocket and they're already giving me that signal. So I'm not going to care for making the money at all. So I'm not going to work with them. So first critical big lesson is you need to pick up the right team, right? And that team depends it's in what kind of development you're doing. So with my partner, we have a, she was she has her contractor's license, but she already have a project manager that she went through a couple of them and I was learning with her how to find that project manager, right? He was a critical piece in order for us to have more than one project. With one project, okay, you can handle that. But when you start growing and you have three, four, five, six, that project manager becomes your best friend, right? So that's very critical from a, a, a level overview. Then once that you have that, I mean, it's really important too that when you're doing development, that you understand the building permits process and how quick they react and what is their limitations? I mean, and are you working with HOAs? Are you working with um, other uh, kind of associations on where whatever you're building? Because again, it's gonna impact your timeline. Here's the critical thing with development. You do a lot of work up front, and your property might be idle for a while if you don't have anything existing in my case we were taking the single family homes putting them down right sometimes they were rentable sometimes they were not when they were rentable we were a little bit more calm kind of thing but when they are not you're burning money every day every day so it's important that you understand how quick it's going to happen when you're developing right i will say that those are the critical thing after that I will tell you, like, go and hang out with other developers. Developers are like the active developers. They're very limited. So you go and you drive around your area and stop by because you will be surprised. Talk to the contractors. Ask them if the, if the boss or patron is there because you're going to get to meet them and you can ask them questions. Um, you will notice that people who live in abundance, they understand that there's a piece of a pie for everybody and they will be happy to share, oh no, I did this or I did that, or hey, I'm getting materials cheaper, or you can give them resources too, right? When you build those relationships, again, it's, it's a lot about relationships. When you build those relationships with other developers, you learn those little secrets that make them successful. And that's what happened with me in California. Did he have any experience developing? partner with this girl. I start learning about permits. I start learning about timelines. I start learning about the different ways to finance a development project, which is a completely different monster, right? I knew how to raise capital. So that part wasn't an issue, but you know, to get the land, to get good rates, it was a little bit more different and they require experience. So those are the kind of things that I would recommend from a high level overview, have a good team. 
you know, go and understand the processes because honestly, once that you are there, the other things is a journey. You learn how to get materials cheaper, how to negotiate contracts with vendors for materials, how to negotiate with contractors to get the best deals. Right. So, but I will say that that those, those will be the most critical things. But do you have a specific question, Chloe? <laughs> um, I mean, I have so many questions, uh, but I know we have limited time. So okay. <laughs> maybe offline. Um, well, one one question I think of that, I think if there are any women who, who might be interested in, in getting into development is the biggest thing I've learned personally is um, the financing piece is yeah. very different than any other project that you're going to do. Um, can you, can you talk about sort of one of the, the you know, one of the deals that you've done for new, new development? Um, can you talk about financing deals that doesn't involve hundred percent private, uh, uh, investor money? So if you've used any kind of like bank or a commercial loan, um, can you describe that process? Because that I think is, uh, is going to be very informative. Yeah. I, I'm going to, up really quick in both of them because we have used harmony lending and institutional lending which it means with harmony lending you can find uh, a a company that literally um give, give you most of the money they will never give you a hundred percent mostly they will give you up to 80 percent and then you have to come up with the other 20 percent either you can use private lenders or you can use your money so development is one of those um, strategies that if you don't have good source of money, this is not for, for someone who are starting. Like if you're a newbie and you don't have money, I don't recommend you just start in development or in an experience, right? It's, it's a little bit of a recipe for failure. Can you make it? Yes, but you have to be willing to go beyond what you have done in the past in your entire life, probably. So, but how many lenders can be used and it will fund at 80% depending how you structure the deal, you want to work with a very experienced hard money lenders because sometimes they can bring more money from the construction side, right? So hard money lenders can be a really way, a really quick way to bring the money to the table to close those deals. But if you don't know how to structure properly, you will end paying a lot of money that you could avoid. So I, I have a way to structure the deals. I mean, depending, you know, how it is but then you have to develop the relationship with them. Now, institutional lending, it's a completely different thing with development. Can you get access to it? Yes, but of course they want a deposit relationship, a bank relationship, and normally they want to see a percentage, right, of money coming in, depending how much money, you know, you are pulling out. So our projects easily, all of them go over the million dollars project. So at least they ask us to have $500,000 in the bank. So at first we start doing that and later the relationship develops. So they are a little bit more flexible with us. But that's another way that you can get access. Of course, there's always private lending, but then you have the hard money, the institutional lending, and they will start with one project. If you can get into institutional money, go for it because it's the cheapest money you will find. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I, that's definitely institutional lending is like where I'm trying to go next. Uh, but I think you need a lot of track record. And since it's my, yeah. our first, we'll, we'll, we'll go to this first one and see what happens. Um, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm planning on staying in new development. So I'm very excited. Really like um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, um, another question that I wanted to ask, and it's probably going to be one of the last questions is, um, mm -hmm. you know, just in general talking about, um, you know, being in a male dominated industry like construction or just, uh, real estate investing in general, um, there aren't that many women compared to men. Right. Um, yeah. and every deal that you do, you're going to run into a lot of people who maybe underestimate you. Um, they have some sort of a bias against you just because of the, how you look and just because of your gender, frankly. Right. Uh, I know I have that happen all the time. Um, and, uh, so can you share like specifics of like what you can do, say, you have a contractor who does not respect you. He always goes for, you know, asking you, where's your husband at? Or, you know, I need to talk to a guy or whatever, right? Um, how do you deal with that uh, without trying to, you know, wanna, wanna punch somebody in the face, basically? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Why we need to control the punching portion. So yeah. that's, that's, that. that's the first thing. <laughs> not the answer. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm joking. Hey, um, when I was in Johnson and Johnson and I was an engineer, one of the biggest best advice I got from one of my uh, boss and mentors is Jennifer. Before you can make changes, you need to learn how to play the game. And in order to do that, what it means is I'm not here to win a one battle. I'm here to win the entire war. What does that mean is, yes, we're going to deal with contractors that they, they don't want to work with women, right? And you have different options. Either you keep working with that contractor, right, or not, because that's always a choice, right? I have worked with contractors that they don't like to work with women, right? And at the same time, I have two approaches. I can approach it as a woman, be feminine, and make sure that also I gain respect, right? But I also don't allow them to disrespect me. What does that mean is I have a contractor that asked me, where is your husband? And sometimes in the conversations, I'm like, well, why do you need him? Right? It's like, well, I need to talk about contractor stuff. And I'm like, yeah, well, can you lay it out and explain it to me in such a way that you think I will understand? So I tend to be a little bit sarcastic and sassy at the same time. You wanna, I want to keep working with him. I'm not going to fight him right away, but here's where the magic goes. When he presents a problem, I allow him to be the man because he thinks he's better. Okay, I'm not going to fight with him. I'm not going to change him in one day. We're going to learn how to work together with our differences. But the first thing I do is tell me what is your solution. And then I was like, that sounds interesting. Of course, if I know I have this problem ahead of time, I already call like another five women and another five guys to understand how they will solve the problem. And then I come back to him, right, with knowledge, and I let him talk to me. And then I offer alternatives to him. Well, that sounds very expensive. Have you thought about this? Or have you thought about that? Or have you thought about this? And now we are in a discussion in the same level, right? So I make sure I bring myself up to speed. I don't get combative right away or any of that because I want to get the job done, right? And my intention is not to change the contractor, but to help them level up with me to understand that we have, he might have some experience more than me, but I'm not, you know, with my hands tied. And there's a process and I know my things and I know how I can put it together. So if he insists that he only want to work with man, then I'm like, yeah, perfect. So go ahead and make money with man. I'm going to work with someone who want to make money. As simple as that. So you can help them understand, right? In a very elegant political way is like, I'm a woman, you're a man, and I don't see the difference. Both of us can work it out together. But if that's what you want and you don't want to make money, fine, go and don't make money, right? Fire. Mm -hmm. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah. So yeah. And there's times like, I really like the contractor a lot in regards to his job and they want that male energy. Okay. I'm not going to change it in one day. I'm going to bring one of my project manager and help him out. But then what I have my project managers train is talk to my boss. She is the one that makes the call. So my project manager might be at the same level or better than him. And then if, if, if he tells him like, you need to talk to the boss, now he is leveraging his influence as a man and showing him, I respect her. I suggest you do lesson to her too. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a very delicate way to do it too. So, and sometimes I just fire up too, <laughs> right? When I have to, it's like, you know what? Um, I feel that you can do a better job. Um, and apparently you cannot do a good job and you cannot work with people and you don't like to make money. So I don't think this is going to work. So bye-bye. So literally. So there's yeah. some that you have to do that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Honestly, just... Sometimes you just have to make the hard decisions and fire yeah. people. Um, yeah. And then, you know, just find the people that 
align with um, how you act, you know, how, how you want to operate, how, you know, align with your goals, align with your objectives. Um, and, and, you know, I think there are, there are people, there are bad contractors, obviously there are bad apples everywhere, but I think there are also good, good contractors that you just have to keep trying until you find the right people. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah it's all about hire slowly and fire quickly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, um, we are over the time limit. Um, it, this was so personally, this was so informative and very inspirational. I hope that other women found it the same way. Um, I'm going to uh, put all of Jen's social media and everything so that if you guys want to reach out to her, um, you absolutely can after this. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in this morning. Uh, and thank you so much, Jen, uh, for tuning in from Phoenix. Yeah, thank you for having me today on your program. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you have a fun, wonderful week. And I'm looking forward to hear how your development project goes. <laughs> yes, and we'll keep you updated. See you soon in Austin. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe below. And you can find out more at wealthwarriorwoman.com.